What's up guys and welcome to the video. We're on a gravel adventure again this week. We're actually pre-riding the route for what's called April Fool's Gravel Camp. It's a gravel race, about a 60 mile gravel race here in Land Between the Lakes the week of April Fool's. That's why it's appropriately named. We've literally been riding for like nine minutes and Ryan already has a flat but in his defense we did just come down this really chunky hill back there so I mean anything's possible. Speaking of which I've actually lowered the pressure just a little bit today as a test. I'm running like 39 in the front and 37 in the rear. We're gonna see how that feels. Obviously I'm tubeless and I've been running probably a little bit too high and this route's a little bit more rough than things we have been riding so it's probably a good time for it. on the gravel bike in the books. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I actually had five four minute all out efforts today. So I, I felt the fatigue in my legs. I do apologize because I didn't really do a lot of filming today because this course for this race, it's a little bit more technical than the Dirty South race that I pre-rode a couple videos ago and that race is coming up this weekend. Like we got on the trail for a bit, we got on some of the rougher gravel roads, and then we rode a lot of the really good roads that are out here in Land Between the Lakes and in Kentucky. So pretty cool gravel event for sure. Like I'm actually looking forward to the fact that it's a tiny bit more technical in some places just because it's like a it's just different, you know, it's it's pretty cool, I think. So I might have made a critical mistake today. I got a peanut butter and jelly, but I accidentally pre-mixed my recovery shake. Uh, I was just getting everything packed and just went ahead and put the mix in here. So I was really curious to see how it was gonna hold up. So this is not gonna be bad at all. I was so worried that like this would do some weird stuff in here, but it is mixed back perfectly well. So that's good. All right, I gotta head home because I've been gone forever today. I left the house a little bit after 8 a.m. and it is currently almost 4 p.m. That's how long I've been gone. I am just now arriving home past five o'clock. And the whole point of me telling you guys like this time frame, this timeline, is because I'm gonna talk about a topic that I've gotten asked a couple different questions. And those questions are in regards to where is my husband? and how does he let me ride my bike this much and just kind of explain his absence in the videos to you guys so you can get an understanding of what's going on. I thought I would wrap this video up by answering some of the common questions that I get around my husband because he's a hundred percent absent from the videos pretty much and guys that's that's totally on purpose when I started the channel, he told me up front that he didn't want to be in the videos. He's camera shy. And I think a lot of people find that interesting that I have a YouTube channel and then my husband doesn't really use social media and doesn't want to have his picture taken or be in the videos or anything like that. But yeah, he he's not interested in being in the videos and I respect that. Anybody who would tell me that they don't want to be on a video, I would respect that 100%. 
Being on YouTube is not easy. You're really putting yourself out there to a lot of criticism. So I totally get that. And like I said, I totally respect it. The good news though, is that I've actually been getting him to help me more with making the videos, maybe taking certain shots or flying the drone. And that's like a big step for me. I'm actually an incredibly independent person. Like, I mean, pretty much to a fault. So whenever he's around and available, I actually try to give him the camera and let him record some things for me because as as this channel grows and I figure out what my vision is for it I've learned there's a couple things that I can't do on my own so he's been able to help me with some of that stuff so that definitely works out and hopefully we can keep doing that more and more and get some cool footage out of it people always ask if he is a cyclist and the answer is no he does have a bike it's a hybrid bike and you guys have actually seen it when I work out in the gym because it's literally right beside my gym he rides when I make him ride. Honestly, I think I get a lot of unfair criticism around that topic in general. Uh, a lot of people tell me that they don't understand how we're together because we don't have anything in common because I'm a cyclist and I have a YouTube channel and he doesn't bike and doesn't like cameras but I don't see some of the men who ride just as much as me and more and whose wives don't cycle like I don't see them being you know asked the same thing so it's kind of I find it kind of funny in a way so and then I what the somebody in my yard I've been asked this question before and I thought I would go ahead and answer it because maybe it will help someone out and that is that I've been asked how do I fit in all my training and racing with a spouse who isn't involved in the sport and the best advice that I can give you is that everyone's situation is unique and different but the key to it is finding the balance my situation you're gonna find is incredibly unique and I would say the number one thing that allows me to do what I do is the fact that we don't have kids you dedicate so much of your own time to them but we don't have kids so when I go out and do my thing he's able to do his thing and you know normally when kids are involved if I'm out riding he has to be watching the kid he doesn't get to have his own personal time find the balance there like you go do your thing but you have to make sure that your spouse has the time to do their thing as well the second thing that makes my situation especially unique is that my husband does shift work quite a lot of the long rides that I do on the weekend he's either at work or asleep for that's part of the reason why I always try to get up early and get my workouts in that's definitely a trick that anybody can possibly use get up early before the rest of your family wakes up and get those workouts in when it's a long ride and he's off work, he usually still sleeps in. So if I start my ride early, then he's asleep through a good portion of the ride. And so it's not like I'm abandoning him all day. That's how he puts it. And then we found that like through the week and at different points in time, based on if he's working or if he's working a specific shift, there's definitely certain times where I know that I'm pushing the limits and he will let me know. So communication is definitely a big key in that. And part of it too, again, is that balance, is that when I push it too far, it's bringing it back and making sure that we have that quality time together. It's really easy once I get my ride in to come home and relax and do whatever we wanna do for the day. I basically just focus the rest of the time on spending time with him. And like I said, that's basically finding the balance. So that's how I make it work. I think that probably sums up the majority of the questions that I get surrounding my spouse. So he's not a cyclist. He will come to races with me if he's off work. So you guys can obviously tell I'm married and my husband is never in the video. So hopefully that answers the question as to why. So I'm gonna wrap up the video here, guys. Thank you so much for clicking on it. This was kind of a more mellow, boring video. I do apologize for that, but hopefully you learned something about my personal life because I don't share too much of it, I guess. Anyways, hit that thumbs up if you like the video. See you in the next one.